Welcome everybody to NACI's Public Policy Forum in 2024. My name is Britannia Brown and I am joined with Kareen Hendrickson in Wisconsin as well as Lauren Hogan from NACI and we're here to talk to you about Day Without Child Care. You see the save the date on the screen is going to be Monday, May 13th, 2024. But before we get started, I want to pass it over to Lauren and uh, Kareen to introduce themselves so y'all can know who we're talking to today. Go ahead, Kareen. I am Kareen Hendrickson. I am a family child care professional in uh, Wisconsin and in a rural community. I also have worked with a grassroots organization to get a movement going here in Wisconsin for early childhood. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren Hogan. I'm currently a strategic advisor at NAUIC, and I have the joy of working with Britannia and Kareen on a bunch of stuff. We're really excited to be able to talk about Day Without Child Care with you all today. And Britannia, I'm just going to make sure you can bring up the slides on your end, too, so that we can all see those. Yes. Can you see my slides? Not yet. Oh, great. Well, here we <laughs> We are talking about the now we can see them. Today for David on child care. <laughs> Listen, we are educators and we know that messy, lovely action is beautiful. And so uh, thank you all so much for being with us while we got the slide going. Now we're going to really talk about day without child care. I want to introduce myself again. My name is Britannia Brown. I'm based in Texas. I'm a child care provider in a rural area, and I'm also the mother of twins. Additionally, I am the child care organizer who put forth the Day Without Child Care campaign on a national response to us not winning the, the uh, amazing funding that we thought and the, the structure that we thought was going to happen with the Build Back Better that Biden had in years previous. This was a call to action of parents, child care providers, educators everywhere in communities to be able to come together to say, we are trying to prevent a permanent day without child care. What can we do now to show that our show our elected officials that we are out here, that we need their help, and that we also know that we are the help that we need. So we came together and did this National Day of Solidarity. This is going to be our third annual year of Day Without Child Care, and I'm just so excited to be able to, to tell you more about this. If you see this QR code on your screen, go ahead and take a picture of it. You can click on it. Um, and it will bring you to our Day Without Child Care website where you can sign our pledge. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But today we are going to, did your screen change? Mine didn't. Not yet. There we go. Today we are going to talk about our political moment, how and why the National Day Without Child Care, and then also how and why do we need to have this local and state coordination around this Day Without Child Care. And at the end, we want to bring everybody who's at the Public Policy Forum and beyond, wherever you're going to share this information that you're learning today, taking it back to your communities, we want us all to take collective action to be able to have these events, have this national coordination, and as well see what supports are in the AEYC community as well as the Child Care Changemakers community. Because it's going to take us all doing collective action to win the child care system that we all need and deserve. So before we get into that, I just want to mention that, again, Child Care Changemakers is a national group of child care providers, parents, early educators, and organizations across the nation who believe that we can win an equitable child care system that works for us all. And that is going to really hinge upon us learning what the issues are around the states and having input from people just like you who are in this forum who want to go and really be the change makers in their community. Lauren, I want to pass it over to you to talk a little bit about the political moment that we're in on a national scale. What can you, what picture can you paint for them about what's going on in childcare right now? Thanks for Tanya. So, I mean, look, we're here at Policy Forum. You all have heard a lot of the context already for the struggles that, you know, childcare programs in all states and settings are facing as we're dealing with an ongoing crisis, a staffing crisis, a supply crisis, a crisis of challenging behaviors that educators are dealing with, underlying a compensation crisis that, you know, is both longstanding and urgent and has been with us for as long as any of us can remember and before, but is really challenging us, all of us in this day and time. Um, and the way that, you know, the low compensation is leading to all of the challenges and supply quality um, that we're seeing across the board. 
I think one of the things that really speaks to all of us about day without childcare is the way, well, two things. One, I think is the way that it connects to a number of other organizing movements that we're able to sort of bring together so that nothing stand on, on, on its own, right? So we're here at Policy Forum together. We've got Week of the Young Child coming up. We move in, you know, that comes up in April. We move into Day Without Child Care in May. Strolling Thunder happens, at, right? So there's this progress that everybody can sort of participate in across multiple national organizations, not to mention all of the statewide work that you all have been going on, all the local and state organizing that you're doing to bring folks to the Capitol in your own state, to come and do fly-ins in Washington, D.C., and to have these consistent messages move from moment to moment so that we are, again, countering this. We know that in throughout the sort of pandemic, the attention to childcare, its role in our economy, its role in what it meant for people to be able to go back to and then stay at work, Obviously, the ongoing role for child care in a child development context and what it means for kids and families and educators, what it means for labor. There's a labor move, right? So there's all these different conversations going on. And there's a sense that like, okay, there was relief provided for child care. States seem to be, hand some states are handling things like, maybe it's fine. It's fine, right? It's fine. This Push back against it is not fine. We're not fine. <laughs> it's no. not fine. <laughs> no. Right. We all know, we know we're not fine, but there's this moment to be able to need to keep pushing forward. And Day Without Child Care really shines a light on how not fine it is mm -hmm. in the child care community and what that means for kids, families, businesses, the economy at large, and gives everybody a moment to really look at that. So to make sure that nobody is putting childcare on the back burner and nobody is saying like, okay, well it's handled for now. So we're going to turn our attention to all these other things, but that this moment keeps growing and the need to sort of do this collective, powerful movement building work. That's really the moment that this speaks to and why we're so excited to bring all of these different pieces together and give you all an opportunity to sort of see how the thread runs through it all and participate in all of the different pieces along the way and connect all of those dots together. Absolutely. And Corrine, she mentioned the local and state level work that we have to put in. Do you have a quick blurb about how that has come together for you? <laughs> Yes. Um, so the great thing, like Lauren was saying, is that if we have the same message consistent, whether it's at the local, state or federal level, then we have the same ask and we're more likely to have, you know, things happen in, in a good way and in a meaningful way that actually creates the changes that we need. Because some states have been fantastic champions, like my neighbor, Minnesota, has invested almost a billion dollars into their child care system. Meanwhile, my state is looking at you know, deregulation and making it so that younger children can watch children. And that's unacceptable. And for us all to be coming together and having the same message of these are the three things that we need. These are the three things that we want. These are the three things that are actually going to make the changes that we need for our children, our families, our childcare educators, our employers and our communities. And that way we can be stronger together and just give that message to everybody at the same time in the same way. I love so that. Exactly. We can give the same message to the same at the same time in the same way. And this ecosystem that we're creating as early childhood organizers and community advocates, we have been advocating for our same demands for years. We want thriving wagers for all care educators, no matter the setting. We want them to be paid up front. No other industry can run like that. We want our businesses to be respected and we want the care and education that we provide and go to school for to actually be supported with compensation that is quality for us to have a good quality of life. Our second demand, we want affordable and accessible childcare for all families who need it, regardless of your zip code, your skin color, whether you're a single mother or have multi-generational home. We don't want to outprice, but the system that we're living in is, is forcing us to. We don't want to uh, raise our prices for families. We know that they are struggling to afford it, especially as we are all recovering from this pandemic. We need to band together to make sure that it stays affordable for them. But that doesn't mean compromising quality. 
We want an equitable system, childcare system that is built on racial and gender justice. We know that women in the care work are often undervalued and underpaid. And we also know that the racial impacts in black and brown communities that are always under-resourced and underfunded as well have a cross intersectionality. And that's why we incorporated them into our child care change makers demands that we've been advocating for for over, for over four years. And so we on this day without child care are coming together to say, hey, nationally, we're all singing the same notes to the chorus. We have those three demands. It may look different about what our states are. We may have different melodies and things like that, but it is coming together to say, we cannot go a day without childcare. And we have to understand what that means to us. We have to understand what that power looks like to our communities. And so in years previous, the day without childcare has looked like a number of different things. We have had early educators um, closing down their programs and choosing to take a day to themselves. We've also had other people who are taking more action, taking that next step and saying, I want to make sure that my parents take action with me. I'm closing for this day, but I also want to be able to make sure that they have care in uh, the thing in the day that we close. So let's have a family day at the park. Or let's come together for a couple of hours and really talk about this. Let's invite our elected officials to these events. So in New York, they had uh, family days in the park across five boroughs and they bus people to get there. They bus those children. They made sure that their communities were supported. In Philadelphia, they had a town hall where they had elected officials coming and speaking who have championed policies um, across Pennsylvania. And we also know that California had huge rallies where they were uplifting the voices of parents and child care providers who were both unionized, um, as well as the parents who were struggling to get that access to care, but stood with the providers who chose to take that power and educate um, all of our, the community about what was going on. We see also on the screen, there were children at these events. We wanted to make sure that the, the world knew that we weren't just coming together asking for more money because we wanted it to benefit our businesses or our profession. We wanted it to benefit our children. And we know that it takes a village. Our economy runs on childcare and our children cannot afford to go one day without the care that they deserve. And that is really improved by making sure that we have those thriving wages, making sure that it is affordable for their families and equitable and built on racial and gender justice. So this, the day without childcare has naturally had an elevator style approach. You can choose what works for you, whether it's a digital action when you close and you have a podcast and you're saying, hey, I wanna reach out to the community of uh, parents and providers that I know online. I can't go out anywhere, but here's what I've got. We know that we have to lean on what we have and not and, and lower the economic impact to ourselves. We have to prepare our communities. And so, these people hosted these actions. This is this picture right here with the big orange banner, that's at my Texas action. You can see the construction at the Capitol. We, I closed down my center in West Texas and drove hundreds of miles to the Capitol where I knew I could pull together a big technicolor movement in Texas to say, hey, we can't go one day without childcare. This is just us getting set up. We're, we ain't all even on the steps yet. But we came out and people drove from San Antonio, from Houston, from Dallas, from Fort Worth, from and I drove all the way from West Texas, and there were a whole bunch of people who were local to Austin, and we were out there. Our elected officials came, the press came, and we chose what worked for our community. But it starts by having the right resources and understanding that there are resources out there for us to plan powerful action. As a thought leader on the day without childcare, I worked very hard with my team of childcare changemaker organizers to prepare a toolkit and it is in depth, I will tell you this, <laughs> in depth, everything that you need is in there. Um, it's a parent and provider toolkit because we want these uh, events to be hosted by the grassroots people who actually need it and are directly impacted by the care that is being um, held up by the lack of resources in our community. So if you open up this, if you sign our pledge, you'll be able to get all of these things. So don't worry, you're not missing anything. But in our toolkit, we had, um, how do we host an action? How do we talk about this? What's the narrative we're trying to say around this? And then more technical things. If you're wanting to host um, an event at your childcare center or at a parent park or a home that you're have, um, having to get together with people, for this day, we had templates for you to be able to send to the people you want to invite, to the stories you want to hear um, from. And um, 
You can just copy and paste these, edit them in a Google Doc. This one was for a childcare provider sending out a notice to the parents saying, hey, we're closing on this day. We'll be delayed or it's open. Uh, it's a delayed opening or early pickup in order to participate in the National Day Without Child Care. We're trying to raise awareness about the child care crisis our community is enduring. We will be advocating for increased funding specifically for child care on the local, state, and federal level to better meet the needs of the child care providers and parents in our community. It goes on to say that this center strives to provide the best possible care for early educators uh, for every family in um but without transformational investment in childcare, we continue to struggle to retain staff, keep our prices affordable, and maintain compliance with childcare licensing requirements. That is something the things we're trying to prevent. So they had to let their parents know, parents let other uh, parents know, hey, this is happening at my center, what's happening at yours? They went and took this back to their workplace. There's also a template in there for parents uh, and any other community workers, uh, even if they were child free, to say, hey, my colleague will be out of work because her child care provider is closing for the National Day Without Child Care. I'm wondering how can we offer um, employer-based child care solutions so that I don't have to carry the burden of my colleague while she's taking care of her children. Who's gonna watch the children? It's not just one person's issue, it's all of our issue, it's a community issue. And so these templates are helping us to get the narrative around and it helps us to brainstorm. And we want feedback from these. I created these with working groups of parents and providers and communities all over the nation, but these are very flexible. You can edit them to what works for you, but we want to be saying the same thing and giving those things out to people in a um, very um, helpful manner. We also have permission slips for people, excuse me. We also have permission slips for people to give their kids um, if they were taking them on the field trip to the Capitol, which we have that. Um, and then childcare providers who close their businesses put notices on their door or parents who were like, hey, I can go to work, posted this in their little cubicle or on the front desk where they were signing in. There was one mother who worked at a pet salon. She was like, hey, I can come to work today, wash your pets because my child has childcare. <laughs> and it was a conversation starter like, What's happening today? What are y'all demanding? Oh, it's right here on this fire, ma'am. So this is something, it's a conversational piece. The day without childcare is affecting everybody and we don't even know it until it's right there in our face. So we need everyone who feels comfortable taking action to sign our pledge, um, to join our movement. If you're interested in anything that we've talked about so far, joining our movement and getting on our list will give you access to our team of organizers um, to where we help you through, co coach you through these actions. We also help you with the resources to be able to reach out to your community and harness what resources y'all have there, as well as what supports we can give you, like the swag, those beautiful t-shirts, those buttons, those stickers, um, the banners, social media amplification of what you're doing on the day. We're not going to leave anyone out. We want to amplify the people, the natural leadership of our child care change makers and all the advocates um, here and people at the public policy forum, we know that y'all can reach more folks than we can. So share this link out wide. Um, but this is what we need to build power on the state and local level so that our national movement can be strong. I'm going to pass it over to Kareen to tell you a little bit more about what her and the Wisconsin Changemakers did for the Day Without Child Care. Yep. So thank you, Britannia, for all of that. And in Wisconsin, we had a very unusual um thing happen. Almost all of our events were in the rural areas. Actually, all of the official Day Without Child Care events were in rural areas. Both years, we did pop on right away the first year in 2022 and 2023, and we are planning on going bigger and bolder this year. We didn't do anything at our capital because our our state was not in session, so it didn't make sense to do anything there. So what we did was we talked with our members from across the state and really talked about how can you participate in a way that's meaningful and impactful to you. So we had a wide variety of people um, and things um, that happened from closures all the way down to this very first one was one that they got a banner made, they got donations for that. And so what they did was they invited elected representatives from the state to come in that afternoon um, that, and told parents about it. So some parents were able to get out of work early and did come. And then they also had, as parents came in and dropped off, they had this table set up and it's talked about what was so important and what our action was at the state level and at the federal level. And they had little cards there and the parents put down their stories and they left those. So when that rep came that afternoon, they handed those 
to that person. They gave a tour of the place. And then they also had a conversation with parents and anybody who was there. And so that was extremely impactful. And PBS got wind of the day without childcare and actually asked the director if she would um, sit down for an interview. And she was on that PBS um, news hour on a Friday evening here in Wisconsin. Um, there is a video. You can scan that QR code and there will also be resources in the resources tab where you can click the links too. So that was one of the didn't close, but did this. And then oops, can you go back. <laughs> And then another one was, um, so we built the power. Oh, next slide. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. So another way that we built power was um, Renee is up in the Beaver Dam area, and she didn't want to close because they had had a lot of COVID closures recently, and this was um, last year. And so she said, what if I pretend to close? And so she did that. And then after, I'm going to have you show the video here of her doing that, and I can tell you then what the action was that she did with her families. Let me refresh it because we're going to get this reel from the top. <laughs> so good morning. I just had the first mom literally almost have a heart attack in the driveway. And she saw me standing here with my sign that says, stop. We're closed today. Psych, we're not closed today. But the point of today is to bring awareness to the hard work that child care providers do. If we aren't here, you can't go to work. And if you can't go to work, your employer can't do what they do. So many people just think if the child care providers were all closed and you didn't have us to count on, what would you do? So cool. Powerful video, and I love the enthusiasm, the sarcasm, and that's someone who like had this vision. These are the kind of actions that make sense for you. This is what we're talking about. Hey, doing that little fake stutter. Hey, we're closed. It was perfect. I love that y'all did that, Kareem. And I'm gonna pass <laughs> it over to you to tell you what else y'all were done. Yep. And so then she posted that right away that morning and several others throughout the state ended up being like, oh, I could quick do something like that. And so they did. And so that's even something if you are inspired to do something that morning and put it on the Internet, other people are noticing, send it through, you know, Messenger, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever social media you use um, to inspire other people to come up with things even as the day progresses. So then after she did her spiel for every single family, she then would give them um, she made some stickers that had the name of her program and said, without um, my teacher at um, the place that she was at, I wouldn't be here today. And so those parents then went to work with that and were able to talk about it. She also then had an action for them so that they either could call or send a, an email right away before she the, before those parents left as well. So that was that the meaningful empowerment right away for those parents to give them something to do as well. And then the next step up was my colleague, Brooke Skidmore, and I, we um, are both in the same community. So we closed for the morning both years, and we had um, a presentation at the park. And so this was from the first year, and she, we actually were able to talk Peggy Hack, which was one of the original Worthy Wagers campaigners here in Wisconsin um, out for NACI um, and trying to build that power way back in the 80s. And she's been doing this for that long. I was able to convince her that, yes, her voice was still powerful. And, yes, she's still, you know, still show up if you're, you know, you're able and you should definitely speak. So she spoke a little bit. We had parents that spoke up about why they needed child care. Uh, we had the United Way, we had our chamber director, we had um, Main Street Alliance, our Wisconsin person, and then we invited our elected representatives to also come. And um, our county has seven elected state representatives, and we had the local sheriff come and all kinds of other people. And it turned into a two hour conversation with, you know, speakers that we had lined up and then also people who just were inspired to share their stories. And we had some media connections and relationships for from the, you know, over the past two years or past year and a half with the pandemic. And we invited all of those folks to come on in. And we had um, all, we had the news stations, we had, you know, print media, and they covered the day extensively, um, both the first year and the second year. And, you know, those parents, it was so meaningful and impactful. And having it at a park was really good. Because as parents were bringing their kids, parents that don't have childcare and would like childcare, were bringing their children and like, what's going on? And then they actually, um, participated as well. And we had templates 
and letters and things for them to fill out so we could send those into our reps as well to help empower them and get them um, into our, our coalition within our community. And so the next slide shows all those headlines from the last two years that we had. There's also a QR code for a video for the um, uh, our local news station that had come and talked to us. But they, you know, took saw all of us doing different things. They, you know, took pictures and they really the the in the news coverage was very powerful and very positive and very much they're coming together to talk about how it's a broken system and we're able to really communicate how the lack of wages was impacting our ability to stay open and also the lack our inability to charge more and how the impact it was on families because they're making decisions if my rates go up ten dollars i might have to quit my job and those are the things that we're hearing and knowing about but not the wider our elected representatives and our wider community isn't necessarily knowing because they see the dollars coming in and they're like well so, and then we can explain, well, this is where all those dollars go right back out the door um, and how it impacts the, it, the education of these young children too, and how much their brains are developing and how it's all based on relationships and trusting their environment and, you know, with that adult and that caregiver. So yeah, it was super fun and lots of excited people afterwards and like, can't wait to do it again next year and talking to other folks in their communities and other programs in their communities about how they can come together to do something bigger this year. You know, one thing that really strikes me as you're talking about this, I think there's a sense, I know, like when we've talked about day without childcare in the past with folks who there's a real fear there, I think for some folks about like, what's it going to, you know, and Britannia, you two have talked a little bit about how it's really a partnership between parents and provider. Like it is a partnership. And Corinne, you talked about all like the so many people who came to join you that afternoon. And I know Connecticut started, I think in the very first year with morning without childcare and oh. they got sort of a lot of attention. And that's, that's partly what started the spark, but how many people sort of came together collectively that it was it was serious and joyful at the same time, right? But it wasn't fearful, right? It wasn't like, and I know some folks look, folks are sometimes in places where they have to worry about, you know, retaliation and you got to think about what it's going to mean for you and your families and fear about what it's going to mean for kids, kids safety for closing that day. Like I know we're talking about frequently asked questions and those are things we hear a lot, but I want to help people see, especially as we move from week of young child to day without childcare to strolling thunder. These are all very joyful and serious and collective experiences that I think really bring people together. And I love how you talked about just all of the different groups, the chamber and main street that really came together to sort of put a spotlight on this and sort of let folks know what it can feel like to participate in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the big thing too is invite everybody and anyone because the worst that can happen is they say no. The best that can happen is that they show up. And a lot of people- Solid came, advice from an advocate. <laughs> yep. A lot of people came that we were really surprised that they were able to make it. And um, our local police department, we did tell the chief, but he must not have told the other ones. So it was kind of funny because they noticed all these people were gathering at the park and they recognized, you know, it's a small, we have 2000 people in our community. They know us. And so they realized they're like, wait, who's all over there? So then our local police officers came and joined in as well. And we're like, Hey, what's going on? You know? And we, we talked to them about how, and they have a young staff and they're like, yeah, we just lost, yeah. you know, we are having a hard time recruiting too. And so it really is, it becomes a moment, like you said, a serious solidarity, but joy and empowerment and a way that we really can feel like we can do something about this and we will do something yes. about this. Absolutely. And this, again, is a movement for every community to talk amongst themselves to say, hey, what makes sense for me? We know that we have to come together to be able to pull off an action yeah. on this day, on this spring arc of action for child care. We know that we have to amplify our voices and there are simple ways that we can do that. There are escalated ways that we can do it as well. Whatever makes sense for you, whatever you feel comfortable doing, Child Care Changemakers, NACI, and all of the other ecosystems uh, that we have in this early, or early childhood organizing movement, we're here to support y'all. We want to hear, you know, what those frequently asked questions are, um, what some of those, um, you know, questions y'all have about the legalities of taking action like this. And um, some of the bigger questions that we had were in states where they had a union, there were no strike clauses. So we had to really make sure that we weren't having 
any language around that and making different websites for California and, and other states that had unions and things like that. So again, we are here to adapt Day Without Child Care for your communities and be able to uplift this National Day of Solidarity um, and the actions that you are taking boldly to really write history. Do you understand? We are writing history right now. We are building a child care revolution. And it started off as a dream back in November, November 19th, 2020 for myself. I wrote down Day Without Child Care on a Monday, and it was this echo chamber of events that were supposed to happen throughout the rest of the week, Monday through Friday. And I never could have imagined that this would have been this big in this short amount of time. Like Lauren said earlier, this is a, hey, we're not fine kind of situation. We have to keep showing up for ourselves. Nobody else is going to show up for us. If I would have stopped back in 2020 saying, hey, I don't know, we having a permanent day without childcare around here and nobody else. If I just kept saying that to myself in the mirror, and didn't get on Zooms with people every Wednesday and uh, work with people one-on-one -on -one to coach them through local and state campaigns that they wanted to lead, to build their power, to build their community, to build the change that they wanted to see, we would never have this solidarity across the nation to be able to do this. Messy action is great action. It helps us. It helps us grow. We're all educators here. We know that we want to make sure that our children have the best learning environments, but it also takes us learning about the environment that we're in, the political moment we're in, and the actions that we can take to make sure that we can pull ourselves out of that. And so I'm so grateful for everybody who's interested in Day Without Child Care, and I know we're running on time. So I'm going to um, ask if there are any other questions that y'all have um, that you've noticed across um, Day Without Child Care hosts and people in the policy forums to, um, side and see if y'all have any other questions around that. Um, so one question would be is if my elected representative is unavailable for that Monday, can I do a different day that week? Absolutely. Y'all heard me say it was an echo chamber of events originally. Like we were doing a whole week of day without, it was a week without job if you really want to talk about it, but it started with a day, right? If those elected officials can't meet on that day or they can meet earlier in the week, do a drum beat, do whatever you can pre-record if they're okay with these kind of things. Our change maker team, and I'm pretty sure the NACI team has so many resources to help you get connected to your elected official. We have a congressional meeting guide and we have a team at Child Care Changemakers to actually help you go and set up these meetings, whether you want it to be virtual or in person. We are right now aiming for people to have five people in a virtual meeting and then five people in the office if you can get them, five or less. And that is the power of your numbers. You're bringing stories into a room and whether it's on that day or if it's on days after or days before, every single day we can be reaching out to our Congress people to tell them, hey, we can't go a day without child care and you can do something about that. Right now, they can pass $16 billion in emergency funding for child care, and they're idling, and our communities are suffering. So they have to hear that from us. So take action today. We have other tools that I'll link in the resources with our Child Care Changemakers Click to Call that can let you take uh, action today by calling and emailing your elected official saying, hey, this is what's happening in our community. I'm a parent. I'm a child care provider. I'm just a community supporter, and I know that this cause is affecting my community. I want you to do something about it. Pass that $16 billion right now so that we can get the emergency funding our child care needed years ago. And we can take action together. You can call them, say the same thing, and you can do this action again and again, whether it's for the $16 billion, the $450 billion we were asking for to build back better, or the new transformational funding that we're about to win um, because we're taking action like this. We know we're on the precipice of winning the funding that our child care system deserves, and we know we're going to be sustainable if we continue to take action like this. So absolutely schedule the meeting with your elected official on any day at any time when they're ready to meet, they need to hear our voices and we're going to be there. I just wanted to add on a little bit to that because I mean, look, y'all are doing meetings this coming week as part of policy forum as we lead into, and this is again, where they're hearing from other industries and communities, your representatives, right? Federal and state and local, like it is a repeated, the idea is to be repetitive, right? Like to come back with the same mess, again, different asks sometimes, but consistent relationship development. So mm -hmm. you're meeting with them at policy forum, right? 
you are going to go and ask a lot of them. We're and Britannia referenced some of the resources. We'll be dropping some of this stuff into the tab so that you guys can use these links. As you're getting ready to do proclamations for Week of the Young Child, you go and get these proclamations. And then when you meet with them during Week of the Young Child, you're going to talk about Provider Appreciation Day, which again is also coming up. And then you're going to talk about how to bring them. So you're there for the proclamation. Come visit our program. They're going to come visit your program. Come to the event that we're having so that we don't ever have to envision not even a day, but a world without childcare, right? Like help them walk through the steps that they can take with you and your community so that they're really building this relationship so that as they're trying to make these solutions, they know who to ask for how to solve them. Like you want to be the people they call. And I think that's part of this process of development and really saying like, here's what we're asking for. And here's how we're having you be part of this process with us at, again, all of these different levels. And that helps to see this whole chain of sort of connected events Absolutely. and connected opportunities that bring everybody together. Exactly. Just, I want to reiterate that you said we are building relationships with the people who are directly impacted like us, as well as with our elected officials, because we know that we're in an election year. And I can't say for C4 purposes, but we know that our vote matters. I'm not telling you how to That's vote. not actually C4. That's a C3 comment right there. <laughs> that is very C3. Okay. Your votes definitely do matter. <laughs> Trying to stay within the lines here. <laughs> you know our votes matter. And we know that we're going to be looking at the people in Congress and in our local governments who champion care ideas and real solutions that meet the modern needs for our families. And so keep that in mind as you're taking action. They're supposed to be taking action too, but what they really look at is what gets them reelected. So keep that in mind. Childcare voters can't go a day without childcare, y'all. I'm just saying. Can't do it. Well, thank you. Nope, definitely not. Thank y'all so much for um, joining this, this session with us. And if you have any questions, again, you can click on uh, the link, Day Without Child Care. Um, it'll pull you up. Daywithoutchildcare.org will pull you up here with our pledge. We have a beautiful website and the link at the bottom, act.communitychangeaction.org backslash a pledge for child care 24, 24, 2024. Goodness, that's a long name. Anyway, go to the website. It's going to pull you up here. We have it in English and Spanish and we do uh, respect uh, the language access needs that we have here. Um, we want to be able to make sure that wherever you are, whatever language you speak, we can um, help you to take action in your community. Right now, we offer English and Spanish resources, but we do have some other uh, languages that we national that we have in our national calls, which will still be going on um, every last Wednesday of the month. And we have Arabic and Cantonese. Goodness! Um, so, if you want to learn more about those, as we start to again talk about Day Without Child Care, it's coming up Monday, May eighth, May thirteenth. Or <laughs> goodness, would we have three last year? Last year, it's last last year. year. <laughs> We, we've had three now, so my dates get mixed up, but this action is going to be something that you can uh, be proud of yourself at the end of the year, at the end of that day, too. You're going to come together, and you're going to start seeing the headlines pour in, and you're going to understand that you were the change maker in your community that wrote history. You were the person that stepped up. It was you and the uh, the coalition of people that you're building right now. So harness your, your personal power, harness your community's power, and harness our national power to really create the change that we want to see. This is not over for us. We have to continue to take action. And I really do encourage you to get involved with NAEYC's um, per, um, spring action arc that uh, Lauren talked about, where we have the week of the young child. Get those proclamations in. Build those relationships right now. Get those toolkits and really dig through them with a team. Don't do this by yourself because we're coming yeah, off the nope. violence. We are change makers. It's not just one person who's going to make that change. We are makers together. And so get with your team and develop your team to be able to um, look at those resources, the proclamations, look at the Day Without Child Care Toolkit and get yourselves in order in June to go walk off something to stroll with thunder, right? <laughs> For our children and our babies. This is a spring action arc and you can continue to have these events in your community, whether it's in the spring or not. Have them on a quarterly basis, a monthly basis, because we're going to keep the pressure on on a national level. And we hope that y'all continue to keep the flames lit in your own communities. So thank you all so much for joining. Lauren, Kareem, thank you so much for having uh, this you. wonderful conversation with us. And if anyone has any questions, our information will be in the resource link to the side.
Absolutely. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you.